Well, good afternoon, and uh, thank you very much for this invitation just to tell you some ideas of the history of the studium. Uh, as you, have see, you can see on the slide, I have been leaving the studium in 2014, so I will only describe what happened before. Uh, the studium is a kind of story, so let me start by a short story. Suppose you have a garden, a garden full of flowers, nice flowers with many colors, well aligned along lines, perpendiculars, curves, like we have in the Loire Valley. In this garden, there are gardeners who take care of the flowers. There is an owner who is also very present and he looks carefully to the flowers. And hopefully there are some visitors coming from France or from somewhere out of France in the world. And now suppose that one day a very tiny plant starts to grow, of course, off the lines of the, of the garden. So usually the gardeners would have taken it off, but they did not see it. So the plant started to grow a bit a bit, and then the owner discovered the, the plant. And he thought, oh, this is original. I've never seen such a plant. So he just gave him a, put of a, little, a little bit of water, not too much, just to see, to see whether the flowers would be nice or not. And then he asked to the gardeners to put some more water, some fertilizers, and the plant started to to go, some, some flowers came out, and they, could, they looked very pretty. And he thought, oh, maybe this could increase the reputation of my garden. I will have more visitors. And he gave them some water some, and some fertilizer. And year after year, the plant grew, and here we are. 25 years after, the plant is here, and we uh, celebrate the his birthday. In, in other words, ah, no, is it okay? Uh, sorry, which, which one is it? Ah, okay, good. In other words, what, has, what I want to say is that the continuous development of the studium along these years has been, uh, has been obtained by a bottom-up process. And this is important. It's not a top-down process where somebody would have said, okay, let's do a studium here. You should do this and this and this. No, it was a bottom-up process and initiated by individuals. And this I will try to explain to you uh, how it uh, has been possible and uh, how exciting is, it was and how long it was because it's a low, very low process. When we look back, we can see three steps which we did not anticipate at the beginning. In one step, number one, starting in nine, officially in 1996, uh, the studium started in one laboratory of Orléans and slowly extended his, his, his offer to all the research and the uh, University of Orléans, all, all the research institution in Orléans of the university. And then step number two, uh, with the, the support and the uh, uh, will of the regional council, we became a regional agency for research and international hosting associates. And we ex have extended our uh, field to the whole area of uh, areas of research in the in the region, which means Orléans, Tours, and other cities where the universities have some satellites and there are some activity in research. And step number three, since 2011, we thought, oh, maybe we are not too far from uh, an institute for advanced study. We could modify this and this, and we could slowly reach the step of uh, uh, 
being uh, the Loire Valley Institute for Advanced Studies. So this was not completely s fixed when we started, and it's somehow the evolution, the slow evolution, with, through this bottom-up process which allowed us to do that. What I want to do to, to say now it is, it is to come uh, and give more detail on the very beginning of the story. Uh, and then I will not go through the 20 years or 25 years. I will just after show some important features. But just the beginning, the beginning starting, the beginning of the 90s here. Uh, and when we go back to 30 years ago, we realize that the world where scientists were working was not the same. We are in now in another world than the world that was in that time. We had no internet, no mobile phone, no or nearly no PC, personal computers in the lab. When we wanted to know what was happening in our field, we had to go through some kind of current contents and to look the, at the abstracts and then send the postcard to the author who hopefully two or three weeks after will have sent you the, the, the reprint. So it was a completely different world. Uh, two characteristics I think was I were important. On the situation of the research in France and on, on, in Orléans. In France, research was highly centralized. If you look at the map of France, you would have find a, a big spot in Paris. 60% of the research was in Paris. And the 40 other percent was spread uh, in six or eight cities, big universities on the eastern part of Paris, from the north to the south and somewhere in southwest and maybe in Brittany. And looking at what happened here, seen from Paris in an official report, they said there is nothing. It does not mean there was no research. It just, uh, it just means that it was not according to what people saw, saw in Paris. It was not visible. C'était une zone de déprise. So that was where we were. The other thing we had to know, we have to know, is that uh, due to historical reasons, it would be interesting to describe this, I, I like this story of the universities, uh, the research after the Second World War was centralized in France in a, a big uh, research, in national research institution. And most of the universities, except for the biggest one, were quite low in research because of this. And in Orléans, hopefully, there was a, a young university, 25 years old, who started to go. And there were uh, several uh, laboratories in three campuses uh, related to national research uh, uh, institution. So there was something which was not visible according to what people said. Uh, it does not mean that, that individual labs will not have connection with others in, in abroad, but it means that the overall uh, scenery was not visible. So how did I come involved in this? Well, uh, I was at that time in Paris. I was professor in physics and biophysics in Paris. I had a lab, a research lab, a CNRS lab at the Curie Institute. And one day, CNRS asked me, would you like to come to Orléans and take the head of uh, our Center for Molecular Biophysics. Uh, okay. Uh, I knew, of course, this center. It was the first one in France historically. I knew also that there were some problems inside, some human problems, and, and some problems related to the scientific evolution. So I said, why not? I asked to my wife whether she would like to come here. She said, uh, okay, I will stay four years and then uh, I'll come back to Paris. So I, I just asked CNRS uh, to keep my position in Paris in case, just as a return ticket, in case things would have been wrong. But it was not the, was not the case. So starting from this, it was in 92, 1992. Uh, in the program which I proposed for the, this center, this CNRS Center for Molecular Biophysics, I proposed to create uh, what I called a pépinière postdoctoral within the center. 
which means I wanted to attract uh, people from abroad. I wanted to open uh, the doors and the windows of this laboratory and to, to, to put some new air. So I proposed to, to create uh, a kind of center just to, uh, to attract uh, 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 scientists from uh, in this field of biophysics. CNRS uh, told me, okay, this is interesting, but try to find some, some local support because it's too important and we cannot uh, afford this. We can help you, but trying to find local support. So it, the first proposal was in 1993. One year after, I came with another one, which was uh, elaborated in collaboration with Orléans Technopole, who was the institution here who uh, had uh, the responsibility to, to make the, the academic research uh, speaking with the local industries. So we propose a project, the Centre International d'Accueil de Postdoctoraux. It was an extension of the previous project. Just we added the, the uh, support of the regional council and we uh, wanted to go uh, and interact with local, industri local industries, uh, pharmaceutical industries, and cosmetic industries. So that was in 1994. With this kind of bottom-up project, you have to, to take time because it's not obvious to, to, to have support. So it took some more years. And in two years after, 96, 97, we have had the support financial support of the city, and we decided to, to write a, and, to, and to print a, a sketch. It was a little brochure, very nicely designed with a specialist of that, and which they just put the main uh, lines, guidelines for what we wanted to build. So this was uh, the first sketch. In fact, uh, it was, sorry, Voilà. It was the first one uh, which I could use to just to make lobbying around here. Uh, inside was the main uh, uh, goals of what we wanted to do. We uh, had changed. We did not speak of postdocs anymore. We spoke of, of uh, international associate for one to two years. We spoke of guests for uh, less than six, six months. We spoke of, uh, 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 sorry, sorry, so we, we spoke also of a, a European network, we spoke of a, the Studium Prize, uh, this kind of thing. Uh, so yes, you And between this small paragraph, there were a, certain, uh, a number of uh, short uh, sentences who, which gave the philosophy of the project. And I, I want to show you one or two of them. That's the introduction. It was in French and in English. Comme on, comme on invente une molécule, nous inventons un nouveau concept d'animation internationale de la vie scientifique. Just as we a new molecule is invented, so we are inventing a new international concept in scientific endeavors. This was a bit ambitious, but you know, we have to be ambitious because our system uh, uh, uses plane as carp carpenters do it. With carpenters, they take wood off this plane. And the system uses planes. If you start with a, a low intensity, uh, project, you end with nearly nothing. So we had to start for, with uh, something uh, important. And the conclusion would have been what we, we should have found after 20 or 25 years. Comme on décroche son téléphone, nous activons le studium partout dans le monde. Just as one lifts up the receiver, so we are activating the studium throughout the, throughout the world. So that's what we should do now. Uh, with 25 years after, the studium can activate, and in fact, many, many people uh, uh, have, uh, have attended this meeting, uh, pre former uh, researcher of the studium. So, 
This was the, point, the, the sketch. Uh, just below, we see the first logo. Uh, it was the idea of having a crystal. In the crystal, you see atoms which aggregate, and this crystal grows. It was the idea that the stadium will, will grow. Uh, at one time, we, we thought to, to give the name of crystal to, to, to the stadium, but we did not, in fact. So, with this brochure, I could do some lobbying around, and quite rapidly, uh, a number of colleagues from Orléans were inter has been interested in, in working with, with me with, on this project. This is the list of the first colleagues, and some are in the audience, I see. Jean-Paul Boisson, nice. Sorry. Voilà, on va y arriver. Please. I am from the old time. Okay. Okay. So, with these colleagues, as you can see, they are from uh, very different disciplines mathematicians, physicists, chemist, chem, chemists, economics, etc. Uh, most of them were the heads of the corresponding labs in, in, here. In. Uh, one was the vice president of the university, and you see in the middle is Michel Gino, who is the present, president of the studium. So there is a certain continuity. He was there from the very beginning. And uh, this was a very uh, creative team. It was not very official. We called it the Bureau du Studium. We used to meet in my office uh, after the working day uh, regularly. And, and we created the new world uh, by, by very, very uh, uh, free discussions. After that, this, this, uh, these colleagues have been introduced uh, further as the um, uh, founding members of the studium. So we, we started to open to many disciplines. That's the idea of this, of this uh, uh, slide. And then we had the first two first events in 96 and 97 and 8. Uh, the Statute of the Studium were deposited in 96. So our two fellows arrived at that time. Uh, and we had the first it was not called the Studium Conference as it is today, but the first meeting. I, I want to, to point out this one because it, were, it was important in the history of the studio. What we uh, decided to do with the, our colleagues is to uh, invite each of us has invited a colleague from uh, abroad with whom he already uh, worked or with whom he would like to develop interaction. And we ask them to come and to have some discussion on the, the studium project. What do, what do you think of our project? What would you do uh, with that? And it was also the idea to create a first network, European network. So uh, after this discussion, it was funny. Uh, uh, I told them, I did not say, well, we want to be in the field of biophysics. I just leave it, uh, left it open. And I, I said, which area you think you, we should, we should uh, develop the studium? So at the beginning, each of them said, oh, in my area, we should do this, you could do this, or you could do this. Uh, and I remember uh, one said from the, uh, from the European S uh, S uh, Space Agency said, you should uh, work on, uh, well, the uh, studium should uh, uh, spe be specialized in, in the origin of life, which was clever. But at the end of the meeting, all of them said, no, that's not a good idea to focus on one discipline or one thematics, because you are not strong enough in each thematics. And uh, the weakness of Orléans is the fact that you are not strong enough in every <coughs> discipline and you have a broad uh, uh, sample of discipline. So it would be better to focus the studium on the all, all the disciplines and to try to, to work for the whole uh, 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 
panel of, uh, of research institutions. So that's when we became multidisciplinary, just after this. This is the, uh, some historical poster, the first one with all the uh, seminars that these fellows gave in the corresponding labs, uh, just to let people know that the studium did exist. In fact, it was the first manifestation. And you have also here uh, a kind of small design, which uh, means that we were starting to put the bricks one of the other for the studium and some were not very stable at that time. Now I come to, uh, I want to point out three main strengths, three main forces that have been able to uh, uh, drive the studium through it, uh, its trajectory along these years. The first one, and I was very impressed by the presentation of the scientific committee of today, the first one, is the fact that since the beginning, I did not want it that local people would decide which, uh, which project to accept. So uh, I wanted to create uh, an independent scientific committee, which was not easy. How can you uh, attract people if you have nothing to show? You are just starting. So luckily, we, uh, a, a nice physicist called Hubert Curien, accepted to, to act as a president. He was a very a highly respected uh, scientist in France. Uh, and nobody would argue against what he was telling. Uh, you see the number of uh, in institutions here where he has acted either as president or director, and he has been the French Minister of Research during nearly 10 years, which is uh, quite unusual. He was respected and he accepted to come. And in fact, at the very beginning, he alone was a scientific committee. I mean, nobody would have argued uh, on anything. He, he was, we asked uh, to CNRS to, to send reviews or to send people who would uh, tell, uh, propose reviews from the headquarters of CNRS in Paris. And then it happened. So during, uh, this is important, for us, this was important. During uh, uh, six years, uh, we were under the scientific umbrella of a scientist which uh, could not be uh, discussed. I mean, there was, there was no, no discussion. He was a very, very nice man. Uh, so it left us some time to grow. And then after that, we could uh, start to, uh, to propose to colleagues uh, like some of you who are now in the scientific committee to come. So the next president has been Yves Farge. Ah, décidément. Uh, he was in, there was a kind of continuity here. And he, he worked here about 10 years. He was also a physicist. He, he had uh, uh, experience in industrial research. He was the promoter of synchrotron radiation in France, etc. So uh, the, the, the scientific committee started to be a scientific committee with external members. Uh, and then uh, Dominique uh, has accepted to, to, to take the head. There was a kind of continuity, and I think it's important. What I want to say with the scientific committee is that for the period I, I, I've been here, uh, it was important for the decision and the selection of the project, but individually, many members of this scientific committee helped me to decide where to go. Uh, and I could have discussion, not within the scientific committee, but with individual people who knew what we want, wanted to do. And so we can, they help also in the choices of the, of the path for the studium. Just a quotation of this man, Hubert Curien, je voudrais revenir sur Terre un instant, dans mille ans, juste le temps de voir ce que 30 générations de savants auront su découvrir et entendre ce que les hommes de science seront alors en humeur de dire. I would like to come back on Earth, just a while, 
in thousands of years, there is a time to see what 30 generations of, of scientists will have discovered and what they would like to, to say to us. This is quite clever. So the second main force are, is our partners. And you see uh, the list of partners we have. Uh, uh, depending on the step, it was uh, uh, just in Orléans, and then it was open to the other, other uh, partners in, in the region. Uh, of course, the Centre Val de Loire Regional Council has it. Sorry. Well, the main one, the city of Orléans. Eh? The CNRS has been acting as an incubator for many, many years. That's how we have been able to, to go nearly more than 15 years the University of Orléans, I already mentioned, and the University of Tours, and finally all the research institutions of the region, uh, uh, the Geological Survey, the Alternative Energy, Agriculture, Food and Environment, and Medical Research. So uh, these were, of course, important, and now that we are regional institution, of course, the uh, regional council is the, is the most important now. Ah, she passed away. Okay. Uh, the third force was the, were the people who have acted as director. And uh, this is the list of people who have operated. And uh, uh, what is interesting in this bottom-up process is that uh, finally the people who have worked as director have influenced the, in the way they were, uh, uh, they, were uh, they had some experience. So the building uh, was made of a succession of different skills brought by the director. The first uh, director uh, technical director is Catherine Lavno. She was uh, in CNRS engineer, and she, with her, we 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 uh, decided the, the the sketch of the stadium, and then she had to leave for personal reason. She just came a, a couple of hours, but she already left. She's now uh, abroad, living abroad. The second. Ah. Second is Marie Fokenberg. She was also a member of CNRS. So when I say that we were incubated, it means that CNRS agreed that we have people working for us. Uh, Marie was the member of the staff of CNRS, local staff of CNRS. So she knew perfectly all the laboratories in the region. So she she had to to transform this booklet into some reality. So she, she did all the work to, to, to start this studium. Uh, she is responsible as what, uh, of what we now call l'esprit du studium, the studium spirit, uh, the way to, to consider our, our uh, research associate, the way to, to look for everything, to look at everything. She was also the um, responsible for the fact that we started to, since the beginning, to treat our colleagues not one per one, but as a group and allow them to interact as a group. Then, so she, Marie, uh, operated during step one and two, quite a long time. Then Jeannick Brabant came in. It was a time where we started to, to, to go towards an institute for advanced studies. Uh, she had skills in uh, communication. Uh, she was a specialist of that. And she had to, to promote uh, an increasing number of events and to, to organize them and to reorganize the team uh, at the level of an institute for advanced study. Partly at the, at the same time, we had the possibility to hire a past fellow of the studium he spent uh, one year and they come back home. He was from Australia uh, and 
He accepted to come back for a couple of years to act as a scientific director. So during one step, one part of step three, we had two persons, the executive director and the scientific director. It was a, a, a really important period because with Nick, who had a view from outside, which is important, he could tell us, look what you are doing here, maybe it's not, you have to change, or why do you do this, and so. So we have improved the level of all the orga scientific organization, and he opened the, the, the studium to the European Fund. And now, uh, so he is operating. Uh, unfortunately, I did not work a long time with Sophie, maybe half a year or a year. It was a transition for me. I, I thought it was time to leave. And, uh, and Sophie will present, uh, I think, tomorrow or the day after, the present state of the studium and the, the perspective of, of all the studium. Last but not least, the most, perhaps, the most important contribution, and this was not anticipated for me, came from the fellows, the studium fellows and chairs. I have listed here, probably this list is not complete, I'm sorry for those who I have forgotten. These are people with whom, as a president, I have many opportunities to discuss of the studium and to uh, ask them questions and to, uh, hear, to hear to what they would think. So they have acting as, as uh, builders of the studium. Uh, and you see, uh, they came from everywhere, but this is now normal. Uh, and this on the right is a list of events which we have initiated uh, following some ideas or following some interaction I could have with these invited uh, people. The, the studium club, which we, was operating very efficiently uh, at that time. The studium as an institute for advanced studies. Come, the idea come from a, a, a colleague who, was, uh, who got a chair, a studium chair at that time. The, the idea of the studium survey we had this in mind, but then with a colleague we say, okay, let's go. We, 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 we try to see what, what, uh, what he will do. The studium consortia is an example. The studium consortia are uh, virtual international teams around one researcher here and one uh, the studium fellow who, who want to continue to work during three or two or three years, as long as you remember, and the studium organizes meeting here every six months. There are other things which we did not uh, follow, but uh, I had still had them in mind. The creation of a longer uh, time contracts. In fact, we did not go in that direction, but uh, somehow what we did with uh, Nick Fazzalari, the scientific director, was a kind of long, uh, longer time contract. And uh, we did not succeed to have uh, the Studium Foundation, but many, many people uh, coming here said, why don't you have a Studium Foundation? It would be easier. Yes, but it was not so easy for us. Maybe it will change. Okay. Now I come to an important point, which was uh, how to get a house for the Studium. I have listed here some, some dates and some events. In fact, it took us 20 years to have a house for the studium. Uh, this, <laughs> you have to, that's why I stayed a long time. I just wanted to, to be here when the studium will, uh, will enter here. So just see, in 1994, we were in the Center for Molecular Biophysics. And we stayed there uh, until uh, 2005, 10 years in a lab. Okay, we could use the facilities of the lab and the facilities of CNRS campus, but we were not visible. In 2005, we, uh, we were able to uh, have a house within the, C the CNRS campus. Sorry, we, we were able to have a bigger place within the CNRS campus, uh, which allowed us to start new, new events, 
which we could not do before. And it's only in 2014 that we came here. Uh, I'll just mention one point. Sorry, précisément. In 1999, there was a big uh, uh, call for proposal in uh, the framework of the French universities. Uh, they wanted to improve the status of the universities for the next millennium. And uh, I deposited a project for a house for a studium, a centre de vie studium, uh, to this, uh, uh, this occasion. We have been selected. Uh, 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 money has been saved for us, there was a line for us, and uh, at the very end, you know, some others did say, okay, I don't have enough money, I don't, etc. So at the, at the end, well, we did not get anything, which means that we were not strong enough to, to, to uh, obtain the money which was given by the uh, selection committee. And this was uh, difficult for me, uh, but I decided to uh, go on and go on. And finally, in uh, uh, 2006, the mayor of Orléans, whom you see this morning, uh, decided that we could be incorporated in this project here. So this, this is the house here, which we share with the university, with all the facilities. Uh, and this is important for, for us. Uh, and we have another, the studio, I mean, has another house, not far to here, a small castle, uh, where now uh, our guests can uh, stay with their families. Uh, this was a 19th century building uh, built by the co cousin of the king of uh, France uh, during the French Revolution. Uh, who is now known as Philippe Egalité because he was not in the same bo political board than the king. He was more favorable to the revolu revolutionary people. So now this, is, this was the end of my travel with the, the studium and I, uh, I reached nearly the end of my, my, my uh, speech. Uh, just summarizing, I like the idea that there is a kind of historical continuity uh, between what we have done. Uh, we, as it is said this morning, we have received 25, uh, more than two, maybe two and a half hundred of researchers here, and uh, hundreds of people invited the, in the, uh, the studium conferences. So this is a, a real input for the research. But if we look to the past, as I think somebody said this morning, uh, I think it was the president of the regional council, at the Renaissance period, where new ideas came, uh, a lot of thinkers and artists were invited here by the various kings of France who were, who were living in the Loire Valley. Uh, so I like the idea that people like Leonardo da Vinci, who was invited by the king, who just said, Uh, stayed three years here before he died. Uh, and it, when you look at what he, he brought to France, it is enormous. So I like the idea that the, the studium, uh, we are in the same continuity as what happened in the Renaissance. And if we go further, and I think this has been told also this morning, uh, in the Middle Age, when the universities were Uh, starting to be recognized in Europe, they were not built upon nothing. They were built upon some activity. Uh, I think that uh, you, uh, Dominique, who told that. There were already some activity, and in some places, these activities were called studium. And here we had, in Orléans, uh, studium aurelianensis, which means the, the studium of Orléans, which were, uh, seemed to be recognized, and at that time, Students came from all over the places, there were no border, and they came to, uh, they were attracted by some, uh, ma some, uh, some uh, teachers here who had some, uh, some who, were, who were renowned. And uh, this place 
in fact, was the place where the studium was. Near the cathedral, because the universities were, were, were linked to the church at that time. So there is, it, it seems to me that it makes sense somehow to have a studium here, and I'm quite happy of that. Uh, just, just to finish, uh, sometimes somebody uh, come to me and ask me, uh, why did you choose the studium as a name? So I explained this, and uh, one time a German guy asked me, why did you choose a German word for your institute? <laughs> I say, okay, he forgot that we have some common roots. And, well, the choice was not easy. We remember we have the crystal as a name. I like the idea of crystal with the light uh, sparkling with the crystal. It was modern for me. But I, I saw this studium and I said, may, it may have sense. But I was not really sure. And one day I asked my wife, what would you choose, you crystal or studium? And she said, studium is very strong, take it. And that's how it happened. Okay. Uh, <laughs> she's in the audience, that's why I... <laughs> oh, she suppose, yes, she is. Okay, finish. So, the last sentence is a, a pleasure for me. Uh, I brought uh, an anniversary present. So, uh, anniversary. So, I, I have written a small book on the history of the studium, uh, which I think it was the occasion for me to write it. And I said, okay, it's, there is a, a, a meeting. I, I will try to do it before. So, I can, uh, I have some copies, and those who want one, I will uh, offer one. Uh, with pleasure. So it's a more detailed story of the studio. And now, maybe two personal comments or questions. Uh, as I've said, this was a bottom-up process, which was very slow, but very interesting for us, because we could create new things, we could try some new things, see if it worked, uh, go back or go, or go, go further. It was a bit like doing research. We had to have uh, uh, imagination, we have to have uh, uh, curiosity, we have to have uh, uh, intuition where to go. Uh, but it was slow. And now I think uh, the question we, I have no answer, but which, I, I ask, which puzzles me <laughs> is, that, is that in the future, does the studium uh, will continue on a bottom-up process or will it switch to a top-down process, which is completely different? And the way of managing things are different if you choose one or the other. So I have this question in, in the mind. I have no answer, uh, but I, uh, 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 I just uh, give it to you. Uh, and, uh, in fact, I, I don't want to have any answer because it's not anymore my business. And I, I think it's important for the uh, uh, colleagues who are in charge to, to... But I think it's important to, to see in which way they want to go. And there is another one which uh, interests me, coming back to the flower, is can a studium have a specific perfume? I mean, uh, what, can the studium have evolution in the scientific domain? It's... it's, a, it, uh, evolved. Uh, for example, we, we, we have decided a long time ago to be multidisciplinary. Can we go further? Can the studium go further in such approach in making projects in which some studium fellow could work together and, and have real multidisciplinary approach, interdisciplinary approach, transdisciplinary approaches, I don't know, but this, I think it's a question which could be raised. And in fact, both of these questions, which I asked me, could be summarized if we come back to the flower, uh, non-aligned or aligned? Should the studium continue to be unaligned? Should it be aligned to what we have around? Okay, that's my question, uh, I thank you for
یا اتمشون